Plus your Invitational, I'm D2, with me is Monk, we are English casting you, English casting this for you today, sorry, and uh, now we're going to see Surrender versus Jaysha after we just witnessed Eloise defeat Fu Oliver three games to two. Right, um, Surrender of course is one of the best players in Korea, if not uh, regarded as the best player in Korea, he uh, got rank 1 legend a lot of times on the Korean server or in the Asian server. He also uh, finished, he got first place in the OGN Masters Season 2, I believe. And he got second place in the OGN Season 3. And there are only three seasons this year, so that's got to be quite an accomplishment. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, meanwhile Jay Shaw, what can you tell me about Jay Shaw? I don't really know too much about him. So, Jay Shaw, if you guys don't know, um, the half of the players are invited, half of them are uh, qualified from China, and Jaysha was uh, a pro qualifier into the qualifier that qualified for him, so he had to qualify twice, as we see Surrender on the screen, part of uh, Ku All Killers. And uh, so Jaysha, uh, he's on Team Celestial, and he actually beats Love CX, the BlizzCon qualifier, in order to get here in the final of uh, that qualifier. So, um, and uh, actually, as we take, we'll just take a look at Surrender's decks here for a second uh, before we get back to Jaysha. And uh, <clears throat> looks like Surrender's bringing Shaman, Rogue, and Mage. Looks like a uh, Tempo Mage and a uh, standard-ish uh, ro uh, Oil Rogue and uh, a pretty kind of smorky face uh, Mech Shaman. Right, I'm just taking a screenshot right now so we can uh, refer to these decks later on. Uh, pretty aggressive lineup, I'd want to say. Um, uh, Fire we were talking to Firebat yesterday and he was saying that he always... Uh, gears his lineups to do one thing, to be really good against one kind of deck. And we can see it with Surrender's lineup. Very, um, I would say very aggressive oriented decks and very uh, almost face oriented decks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, getting back to Jay Shaw, he is one of the more unknown players in this group. Um, just going back to what he's accomplished, uh, he got the uh, top four of the 500, uh, 512 man gold series open uh, one time. And uh, in order to get here, you have to get through a qualifier tournament. And he actually qualified for that qualifier tournament twice. Uh, so really worked hard to get here. Uh, managed to uh, make that happen. And uh, look, taking a look at these decks, he has Shaman, Warlock, and Paladin. It looks like it's going to be a Zulok. I think our first at this tournament so far. Uh, another uh, mech face Shaman. And for the Paladin, going to be a secret Paladin. Yeah, really strange choice. Uh, the one card that actually sticks out to me... Uh, from Jay Shaw's lineup is the Leper Gnome in the Zoo deck. Typically not something that we see because Zoo is not really a face-oriented deck. It's more of a, a board control-oriented deck. And Leper Gnome, yes, it's a good turn one play, but after that, I don't think it's really that great. Yeah, I mean, his deck is a bit more aggressive than what you typically see. Obviously, he has that Sea Giant, so uh, that can go towards a later game as well. But nothing like Morganis, no... Um, you know, Dr. Boom or something like that. So he kind of wants to finish these games out early, I believe. Uh, and being able to get that one drop on turn one is really important, just uh, increasing his chances uh, by that much, having that uh, Leper Gnome in his deck. His Mech Shaman is also really weird. Um, I'm not sure if you caught it, but it doesn't have Tunnel Trog in it at all. Mm. Instead, it has two of the Ancestral Knowledge. So you have like this really, like I want to say, clunky Overload card. But you don't have the card that benefits from Overload, which is the card that everyone's been hyping up recently. Right. We'll see if he can kind of survive without uh, the Eternal Trog, which helps out so much. Um, the Ancestral Knowledge is something that Luffy put in his deck, but I believe Reyna did not. Uh, those two being the most popular uh, aggressive Shaman decks right now. So uh, interesting to see that from Jaysha, especially without the Tunnel Trog. Uh, we're going to start off with a classic matchup, actually, that being the Oil Rogue versus the Zoo Warlock from Jaysha. And uh, this is a pretty classic matchup. It used to be heavily favored for the Rogue, but uh, with all the Death Rattle minions coming in ever since Next Ramus, kind of kind of crazy to be talking about uh, such a early uh, expansion. But yeah, ever since that change, it's been a bit more even of a matchup because it's kind of hard for the Rogue to deal with all the... Uh, big guys, but in this particular case, I think that um, Surrender will have an easier time than normal against uh, what's his, what is the normal Zulok, considering that Jaysha doesn't have those big guys like the Dr. Boom, like the Morganis. Right, Dr. Boom especially is such a huge problem for, uh, for Rogue, 
uh, that the absence of it actually just uh, makes the rogue matchup so much better. Right now, if Surrender is able to stabilize early on and get a board lead, then there's no like huge threats that uh, J Shock can come back with later in the game. He has to rely on flooding the board. Um, even though there's like not really um, that many flood cards uh, in his deck, like there's no uh, Relinquary Seeker in this deck. Yeah, no Reliquary Seeker in the deck. Uh, though that, that all that does really is make a 5-5 at the end. Um, and it's pretty hard to rely on that. I think usually you only take that off the Dark Peddler when um, you don't have anything else good to take. So you kind of go like, well, I guess I'm going to go for that this uh, this uh, game. So Sinner has an interesting option here. He can take care of this Void Walker, but it's only 1 damage per turn. And uh, typically you want to save that backstab for something more dangerous like a... Um, maybe this Direwolf Alpha, or maybe like a Knife Draggler later, so uh, I kind of like this decision by Surrender, being patient, not worried about that one damage per turn. Right, and also if he saves this backstab, he also has the option if he top decks into SI Agent to uh, activate it later on. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, huge Ooh. to be able to uh, activate those combos. So it looks like we have a Tournament Attendee, a Mortal Coil, or Soul Fire. All reasonable options here. Uh, Tournament Tendi just getting a, another guy on the board that Surrender has to deal with, and he can't, you know, use his weapon on everything. So, uh, pretty tough decision. The Mortal Coil can, you know, finish off something. It can be pretty useful. Not enough space for it usually in a Zoo deck, but still uh, a good utility card. But looks like he's going for the damage, realizing that he has to finish this, this game off soon if he's gonna uh, be able to win it. Yeah, really, the uh, Mortal Coil isn't that amazing against Rogue. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot of 1-1 minions besides the Violet Teacher tokens. And uh, Soulfire is exactly what you need to finish your opponent off. Although, I suspect uh, sometime in the future we'll see something like the uh, uh, the problem, the old school problem where he has both Doomguard and the Soulfire in his hand and he has to get rid of one or the other. Yeah, that is uh, quite the problem that uh, thankfully Zoo players don't have to deal with too much anymore because of that, you know, Void Collar helping out. And uh, Surrender with kind of an interesting decision here. Um, obviously, you can't use that prep like an Innervate. You can't get out that uh, Edger Drake early. But, uh, yeah, pretty, just pretty tough in general. And nothing to do. Really wanted to top deck a 3-drop there. Unfortunately, doesn't get it. And, um, yeah, just going to pass here. It doesn't... I mean, he could have maybe done 1 damage to that Void Walker. Uh, I mean, with no backstabs left, what do you think the reason is behind not even touching that? Maybe just don't take the damage? Yeah, I guess every point of damage matters. He also has to think about how eventually he's gonna kill this Void Walker. Or, yeah, this Void Walker. Um, and I guess he's thinking that um, his pilot shredder will somehow interact with it, and the one health doesn't really matter too much. Mm -hmm. In case you guys are just arriving to uh, this broadcast, these players have to use all nine decks. Uh, all, nine, all nine classes, excuse me, as they play uh, this round robin. So the, every player today is going to be playing three matches today. Uh, full round robin, the matches are already decided. So, uh, you know, Eloise isn't going to play the winner of this. She's going to play Surrender next, uh, for those of you wondering. And that's also why you see two shamans on the screen. They have to play all nine decks today. Right, and this uh, might get slightly out of control here with the implosion that we know is coming up. Even though, you know what, Surrender has a really good turn next turn with Azure Drake Prep Fan of Knives that will clear off most of the board. Um, and like you said, if he goes for that play um, and there's uh, and the uh, Nurbian Egg doesn't get played, you're right that that one damage to the Void Walker would actually matter. Uh, what essentially would happen is that Surrender would just hit the Void Walker yet again. Mm. And, oh, he goes for something different. Yeah, interesting. Doesn't want to commit too much to the board, but in this case, he's actually making himself more vulnerable to AoE, uh, kind of paradoxically. Oh, so so much more vulnerable to AoE, actually. Maybe he's looking um, to play this this uh, Nerubian Egg, though. That could be the case. Yeah, I think I think what he wanted to do, he wanted to guarantee that his board not be too vulnerable, so he wanted to make sure he got this Nerubian Egg out, which means that... Uh, he didn't obviously have the mana for that implosion, so in the end it worked out pretty well for him. We could see, um, yeah, I mean, I think you go for it anyway, right? Just leave the uh, Nerubian on the field. Yeah, you're you're actually not that scared of just a lowly 4-4 four, four, uh, on the board. You can deal with it in a variety of ways. Like, if the zoo only has a 4-4 four, four, and you have a 4-4 four, four on, on the field at turn 5, I would say that's like probably slightly above average when you're rogue facing off against zoo. 
Uh, not only that, but you have way more research sources than your opponent, especially because even though you're going to clear the board mostly this turn, you're also going to draw two additional cards. Yeah, and something like this uh, Dire Wolf Alpha could be a slight tell to Surrender. Sometimes that card is cut uh, in favor of bigger cards, uh, like, you know, the Mulganis, like the Dr. Boom, just uh, more you know, just powerful cards in general. So seeing this, maybe he feels like if he can just stabilize, then he'll be good, good, good. Sorry, in good shape. As I started my way through that sentence. Um, whereas if he's playing, you know, a deck that you know has bigger creatures later on, then you know, opting to not clear everything all at once could hurt him in the end. Uh, if you kind of have to deal with thing, you know, minion after minion after minion, uh, back to back to back. All right. Jay Shaw is considering the merits of Soul Firing here, but also considering whether he wants to tap first. Is the average minion that he'll draw from the tap better than, like, would he play that minion? And, uh, like, would, did he want to discard it? Uh, unfortunately, I think that's one of the cards he doesn't want to discard. I think he would have been happy with the Abusive Sergeant. Um, the Implosion would be pretty useful, especially after you've seen uh, one Phantom Knives. But we know from our perspective that uh, the double blade flurry is uh, definitely a real threat. Yeah, definitely. And you always have to keep uh, those AoEs in mind, especially because Surrender, uh, he's essentially past his first three turns. So definitely something that's on the mind of Jaysha going forward. And uh, Oh my god. Wow, that is pretty... Well, it's, like, it's kind of awkward still. Uh, he probably just has to SI7 the face here. But... Um... If you have board control against a zoo player and you're still at a relatively high health, I think, like even though you like the, it's like kind of like first world problems where you have to SI agent the face as the rogue player, right? Yeah. In the end, though, I mean, if you if you go for that play, you have sap double blade flurry in hand, and from you really want to be you know saving your uh, resources as much as possible. And I was about to uh, to uh, suggest this play potentially just sap the Nerubian, especially because that might be the biggest thing you see. Uh, from, from here on out. So I kind of like this. You're saving your backstab and your eviscerate for a uh, place down the road, and you can maybe use it on the Nerubian next turn and uh, kind of give yourself more time overall. Yeah, it's even better uh, uh, with the knowledge that we know that there's no Melganis, there's no Dr. Boom in this deck. Uh, really, the only better card to sap, I think, would be the Sea Giant, but that's going to be... It's actually just going to be really hard to get a Sea Giant onto the field with the hand that Jay Shaw currently has. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be pretty difficult to ha make that happen. And it's also a one-of, so not too likely that he draws it in the first place, especially because he's going to be trying to fight for board control. He might just uh, play out, you know, one drop, three drop, two drop here instead of uh, tapping because, he. I mean, you can't really surrender the board to the rogue really ever because of all the removal they have. Uh, you need to just, to just make sure you get uh, as much momentum as possible. Uh, I would say that's a, yet another pretty good draw here. Um, after you mostly clear the board, do you think it's better to, like if you trade into the Haunted Creeper with your 3-3, three, three, do you think it's better to heal yourself for 3 or to heal your um, SI agent for 1? Um, it's pretty close. Uh, in the end, um, you've seen a Dire Wolf Alpha, and this you haven't seen Abusive Sergeant, I don't believe, so... Uh, say you clear... He might go face here, yeah. It looks like he's gonna go face. Um, I, get, I mean, the damage to face is relevant, too, so I can see him, you know, not wanting to de to uh, bother with clearing uh, kind of two-thirds of this Honda Creeper. It kind of makes sense as well. And, uh, yeah, kind of an awkward hand, awkward situation for J-Shot here. He doesn't get to use uh, both Abusive Sergeants really effectively unless he wants to go face. Dark Peddler's not too bad a pickup, though. Oh, yeah, what would you say is the best card you could get off Dark Peddler here? Well, that Soulfire thing. That Soulfire yeah. is pretty good. Um, I mean, Power Overwhelming wouldn't be too helpful because he, I mean, those Abusive Sergeants do the job anyway. And uh, yeah, I think that's this is really, really good for Tempo at the moment. He can play his whole hand out right now. Um, he could go face as well if he really wants to start pushing damage. But uh, yeah, I imagine he's just going to play everything out and then just Soulfire this. Uh, it's 3-3. He will leave himself very vulnerable um, to board clear, but uh, unless Surrender picks something, something else, it, the initiative could go back to Jay Shaw. Right. Jay Shaw knows that even though he doesn't have cards in his hand, he has a hero power, which keeps getting him cards, so he really needs... <laughs> oh my god, it's so huge. That works. <laughs> I, 
I was just gonna say he needs a well, not only an AOE but cards that draw him more cards, and specifically Phantom Knives and Sprint are two of the best draws he could have gotten. Yeah, definitely. Uh, kind of unfortunate that he can't use that sprint right now. Uh, would like to see a minion and then maybe sprint the next turn. But, uh, I mean, that Phantom Knives is actually pretty big. It doesn't seem like it because of the two Blade Flurries in hand. But those two Blade Flurries represent a lot of damage if you can, you know, pick up Deadly Poison or the Tinkers. And, uh, he can, I mean, those two represent basically the end of the game, especially considering that Jaysaw is going to be tapping a lot from that one. Yeah, I think uh, one thing that Jaysaw really needs uh, in the next few turns is... Um, because Surrender will probably use his sprint on the next turn, he needs to develop a board um, strong enough that he can do immense damage over the next two turns. Uh, any board that j Shaw can make stick on the next turn will probably deal um, two points of damage, or deal damage for over two turns. So like a Doom Guard on the very next turn would be pretty huge. I was wondering what Surrender was thinking about, and that's obviously the only thing that he could have been thinking about, whether to attack the 2-1 or uh, Henry Dagger. Or do that Blade Flurry play. Uh, what do you think about that decision? I mean, he gets... I guess it's, you know, he takes two damage off his face, puts two damage on his opponent, which could matter in the end, I suppose. Um, looks like he really has, you know, kind of um, read into the fact that Jay Shaw is playing a more aggressive deck and not, you know, some bigger minions. Right, so that play, I think, is a play that 90% of, like, players, especially newer players, wouldn't make. But now that you think about it, it does make quite a bit of sense. Surrender doesn't believe that this game will really last long enough for the second Blurry Flurry to make a significant difference. Yeah, Is that so an Azure Drake that he just talked I have no idea. Back? He picks it up so quickly. Oh, prep. So prep, yeah. It definitely makes sense to prep here. Sometimes you want to just prep first, or sorry, just sprint first, if you want to set up for next turn. But uh, so many minions that he could pick up, and it looks like it's paying off for him right here. Going to immediately use the Deadly Poison to get that 1-1 onto the field. I don't think he's going to attack. doesn't really make too much sense, especially because he could uh, top deck maybe a prep and uh, tinkers off of that next sprint. Double Owl wow. comes in the hand for Jaysha. Owl was pretty bad in this matchup. You really want to see it uh, against other minion, or against other decks. Uh, and I imagine we're going to see this Doomguard now that he's picked it up. He's just going to have to get rid of one of these Owls. Yeah, a little unfortunate. He's going to have to silence the Vile Teacher and then possibly Doom Guard into it? Or do you think he, it's possible for him to go up for a more aggressive approach? Well, now that well, he silenced like... the, other, the wrong thing, uh, wrong, wrong thing, quote-unquote, yeah, he's definitely going to do that. Uh, it's just, I mean, Jason is looking at Surrender's hand, right? He hasn't done anything in a while. Um, so, you know, likely just going to be the, uh, you know, just the sap in hand. But that's going to be game. Surrender does pick up the uh, Tinkers in order to finish out the game, and uh, well played by him overall. Yeah, just a really nice play. Um, overall, I think, uh, li like we like we said in the beginning of this match, uh, I think the Rogue did have a, quite a bit of advantage, simply because of the style of Zoo deck that Jayshaw chose to bring to this tournament. Um, I know China is kind of like the, um, the place where Zoo really thrives, and the Chinese players really know their Zoo decks, but unfortunately, j decision to bring this kind of low-curving Zoo deck isn't working out for him. Yeah, definitely. Well, to be fair, that's one of the worst matchups, right? Rogue really excels at taking out small minions, kind of uh, killing the tempo of, of uh, the opponent who tries to you know burst you down with that kind of big board. Just so many options in its arsenal. And uh, we're going to see a completely different matchup now. Uh, obviously, j coming back with that Zoo lock, but Surrender coming up with his uh, aggressive... Mech Shaman. We obviously have Mech Shamans in both of uh, these players' arsenals in this uh, right. series, but um, uh, what do you think about the one that Surrender bought? Uh, obviously, you took a screenshot of that, so uh, right. what, what are some interesting cards in there? Well, Surrender's decklist uh, is, a, again, a carbon copy of Raynad's decklist, so it's going to be like two Unbound Elementals, two Spider Tanks. Pretty mm -hmm. standard, two ofs of everything. Um, a very uh, low-cost deck if it were not for the Doomhammer, so it might be something that people can try out. Uh, I do want to mention that the remainder of Surrender's two decks, Tempo Mage and Mech Shaman, they're quite unfavorable against the Zoo deck from Jay Shaw. I think these two decks, the Mech Shaman, the uh, Tempo Mage, and I would say Druid would be three of the most unfavorable matchups against Zoo. So even though Jay Shaw lost the first game in kind of an unfavorable matchup against Rogue, he still has a pretty good chance, and it was pretty smart of him to bring uh, this particular zoo to this uh, tournament. 
Yeah, it definitely can, can be something that works against all the aggressive decks that people are forced to uh, play in this scenario. Uh, Swender with an interesting choice here. He has so many options. Um, he can go for the Totem Golem and then play the Cogmaster behind that. Uh, looks like he's going to go for the Whirling Zapomatic instead, and he can push a lot of damage. Uh, that might be the only way he kind of wins this matchup, right? Because obviously uh, the Attrition Battle is going to go to the Zoo. Right, the Zoo just has so many ways to uh, gain board control. Uh, the Mech Shaman is kind of like a face deck, while the the Zoo deck is kind of like a board control deck, and the board control deck almost always wins. That's why you see Paladin with their Muster for Battles and uh, Shielded Minibots have such an advantage over the Mech Shaman, and it's why you see Zoo have such an advantage over the Mech Shaman as well. Yeah, definitely. I want to talk about the, these plays early. There's a really smart plays by these players. I'm actually getting... Uh, Artosis TM uh, nerd chills uh, going on right here because they're really good. So Render played that uh, Whirling Zapomatic, knowing that he had two options to deal with whatever came on the board, whether it was that Annoyatron or the Rock Fighter in hand, uh, followed by the Cogmaster. And Jay Shaw responding to that, knowing that his opponent could have had an answer, he plays the Haunted Creeper rather than the Knife Juggler so it doesn't get removed. Just really solid plays by both players. Right. Yeah, this uh, makes a lot of sense. I think most people wouldn't play the Whirling Zapomatic early on because it just gets dealt with so easily with so many things. But because he has such a good hand and so many answers to any option that Jay Shaw chose to use, um, it works out quite well. Yeah. Do you, oh, you, you know what? There's an option where you abusive sergeant the Ooh. Annoyatron here. Right, right, right. That might have been actually a bit better. I think, yeah, that was a bit of a an oversight by by Jay Shell. Obviously, something that's pretty hard to see. Um, we have we have Monk here to be able to spot that for us, but it's uh, pretty pretty difficult to see that play. And I think it would have been a bit better to get those one ones out, especially because there's no lightning storm in this deck. Right. So activating the the knife juggler effect, in addition to getting more power in the field, I think it would have ended up a lot better. But especially with our knowledge that the um, that the knives would hit the face. Yeah, with our knowledge that that would happen. Looks like Surrender realizing he's never gonna get, you know, board control back after this first few turns. Gonna start putting the pressure on, make it so it's really painful for Jay Shaw to tap from here here on out. Uh, even has that crackle in hand to push some damage. Uh, what do you think he does here? Maybe plays the totem golem to get some uh, pressure on the board and save those, save the crackle and the lightning bolt for later. Right. Um. So he, he's basically deciding right now if he wants to lightning bolt the knife juggler. Like, how much of a threat is it? I don't think you like... I think this lightning bolt is only going face in this game. I think he's wondering yeah. whether or not he... I think he's wondering whether or not right now he trades the 1-2 into the 2-1. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, okay, never mind. Just kidding. I'm completely wrong, I guess. Uh, so he's going for, like, half board control, it seems like, like here. Uh, that's going to get kind of punished, though, by this Dire Wolf Alpha. Right, but I, I think it's still okay because um, right now with this play, Surrender guarantees that the um, the Cogmaster gets on the field. Mm -hmm. And even though it's only one damage with a mech, it's possibly three damage. And that just means that um, you traded the Lightning Bolt for just a three damage on the field. So it's kind of like the same thing. Yeah, it does. We see, this and, new, we, sorry? we see this new cool Observer feature here from... Uh, from our spectator mode. We, we get to show or hide the cards that are discovered. Uh, so this is the spectator that we're watching. We're not watching uh, Jay Shaw's point of view. Right. This is probably the spectator mode. Uh, well, actually, Jay Shaw, it looks like the hand is, is on the uh, card. So I think it actually oh, right. is Jay Shaw's. In any case, uh, Jay Shaw goes for the obvious play, uh, what he did. Picks up Corruption, though, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I think it's kind of useless. Because if you corrupt something, then that just means your opponent will be able to get into attack with it. Right. So, Swender, I mean, he's kind of competing with the board right now. Um, I think I would have liked the to save the Lightning Bolt for face earlier. Uh, now that he hasn't drawn a mech, it's the, the power level of his board is kind of reduced a bit. But, um, yeah, it looks like he's not valuing the one damage of face. wants to get rid of that 1-1 one, one so that it can't... Uh, to reduce, reduce the amount of stuff that Jay Shaw can commit to the board. Uh, one thing to note here is that imp, uh, or sorry, the flame imp is kind of dead in Jay Shaw's hand right here. Um, in fact, he probably doesn't want to be tapping all that much from now on either. 
right? But again, this is a deck that is forced to tap. It's a very low curving deck, so he doesn't have like the big threats like Dr. Boom or Morganis to to get him um, back on the field. He also, what I noticed is this deck doesn't even have Void Caller. So uh, that's going to be hard as well. Right, right. So isn't able to get out uh, the Doom Guards without discarding. Uh, it doesn't, definitely makes sense. Doesn't have really the time in this deck. Wants to be uh, very aggressive. Um, Jay Shaw has the opportunity to use his Dark Peddler to kill the uh, the Totem Golem, but doing that involves either taking damage from the Flame Imp or not uh, taunting two guys, which is uh, obviously pretty painful. So yeah, he's just going to go for clearing most, but not all of his opponent's board, and uh, obviously going to take the damage from the Leopard Gnome. Going to corruption that uh, Totem Golem, though. Yeah, the Defender of Argus was just a key draw. It's probably the best card in his deck against this type of deck. And, uh, yeah, now it's just up to Surrender to just put whatever on the on the field and hope uh, that his opponent doesn't kill him in the next... I want to say he's on about Ooh. a four-turn clock. Wow. wow. Perhaps perhaps even longer with this double flame imp draw. Yeah, Surrender has a lot of time with that double flame and draw. Obviously, he's a bit worried if he's going to be able to, uh, you know, get the requisite damage. And Jay Shaw, feeling the pressure, realizes that he needs more cards to be able to compete with this board. Uh, goes right. ahead and even taps there. Let's uh, see. Uh, oh, so far it's well, pretty good actually, because you don't Mortal want these Quill, cards anyway. Mortal Quill isn't that bad either, especially. Yeah, but you can't use it now. Yeah, it's really hard. Like this field just doesn't match up with Mortal Quill. Uh, maybe the best draw would have been something like even uh, Voodoo Doctor, honestly. Yeah, Voodoo Doctor would have been pretty nice there. It gets rid of the Flame Imp, that's exactly what he wanted. Uh, Surrender sees that and says, really? Really? <laughs> the, the Flame Imp in your hand you get rid of? But uh, we know that there's two, so it was likely that he was going to get rid of a, a bad card there. Uh, let's see if Surrender pick up, picks up. Does get the double crackle. So uh, spell damage here will be the end of the game. And uh, he might just wait on it, to be honest. Uh, well, not... actually, not, you might go for it because the worst case scenario is you leave him at two, and that means he can't tap for the rest right, of the game. Right, right, right. That makes sense. So, uh, Surrender looks like he's uh, agonizing over this decision of whether or not to go for it. Kind of cool to finally see, uh, other than our, our double Chinese match yesterday, to see both guys in the studio playing against each other. Builds up the suspense, suspense a lot to uh, see both players kind of uh, you know, agonizing over every decision in the situation. Right, so there's only a 3 out of 16 chance that this Crackle doesn't kill him, and that's about a 19% chance. Yeah, so I guess you, I think you maybe just go for it. Um, because, you know, it's only obviously a 1 in 4 of you getting spell damage uh, every turn anyway, so... Yeah, I think... I think you just do it. And like you said, you get your opponent to uh, to 2 anyway. Looks, But he's gonna not do it. Realizes he has a couple more turns to be able to... Um, you know, maybe get the spell damage. Uh, do, does he have a Thalnos or anything like that in his deck? Uh, no, but I think what he's hoping is that his opponent is just going to tap the next turn. Right, right, right. Or, or this turn and just uh, get, like, 100% guarantee lethal. And even if he doesn't, he can spell Power Totem. Mm -hmm. The only thing that... Um, the only thing he gets really punished by is Lothab. Yeah, definitely. Is there Lothab in the deck? Uh, there's not Lothab in this deck. Yeah, I mean, it runs pretty low. The only the highest uh, costing things are the Doom Guard. So it looks like Jaysha is going to uh, push face mostly. He might attack this uh, Healing Totem. Obviously, Jaysha saw Surrender take a long time and then pass. So he's probably pretty afraid of something like, uh, you know, direct damage. And um, this is going to be Surrender's last chance. To, in order to get that, uh, like you said, 3 and 16, he doesn't get it. Doesn't get the spell damage totem, so it's going to have to use these crackles. The first one goes for 3. Oh! And now it's a 50 50 to see if he can get it. We've seen this so many times. 50 50 chance to see if he can get that lethal. And I mean, he has to go for it. He's dead on board, I believe. But uh, here we go. <laughs> He's summoning up all the RNG. Uh, uh, favor that he can hand get right now. Here it comes. He looks. I don't know what that. He looks pretty is. happy. Okay. He looks pretty happy. All right. <laughs> there we go. Guess the <laughs> guess the win there. Uh, yeah, that was kind of an ambiguous reaction. I don't know, but in any case, he does go up two games to zero, and Jay shot in a lot of trouble. Sander only has to win with his. I believe it's a tempo mage uh, to be able to take this series three games to zero. 
uh, or take it overall in any case, uh, depending on if Jayshaw comes back. Jayshaw, by the way, has Shaman, Warlock, and Paladin remaining. Right, so it's a Tempo Mage, so obviously it's going to be unfavored. But uh, what we do see from the deck list is that it has two Arcane Blasts and two Arcane Missiles. So again, two cards that uh, might help him with uh, this matchup. Unfortunately, though, this um, the, the deck that Jay Shaw is running is a very low-curving Zoo deck. So even though J Surrender is getting the Mirror Entity probably from his deck, um, it still probably won't be very good because of all, all the low-costing minions in Jay Shaw's deck. Yeah. A lot of times when you're playing that Tempo Mage, you want the Zoo to have a slower start so that you can set up your combos with those Flame Wakers and uh, get a lot of that damage off to clear your opponent's board. But he's not going to be afforded that time in this game. Uh, Jaysha is going to be having a fast start almost no matter what. And we do see that he has a pretty reasonable hand right now. Yeah, well, it's really hard to have a like not a reasonable hand if you're running a deck like this. The, the nice part about this deck is consistency. You're always going to get something nice. Yeah, absolutely. Just like the old zoo, um, the the newer zoos uh, with all the demon synergy and kind of curving out to the mid range area, uh, not as consistent, but just has so much more power in the end. Uh, this is kind of an old school type zoo, so it's going to be helping out um, in uh, getting that nice curve. Jay Shaw, he has the opportunity to silence, but then that allows the Mad Scientist to trade into the Knife Juggler. So it looks like he's favoring his Knife Juggler quite a bit, especially because he doesn't really care about, you know, Mirror Entity coming up, uh, potentially. I think if this Abusive Sergeant kills the Mad Scientist, then his opponent gets an Abusive Sergeant? Is that true? No, it's the other way. Okay, it only works with, uh, um, with the SI7 Agent and uh, things like Goblin Blast Mage, I suppose. So... Um yeah, and also um, Cruel Taskmaster also procs it. Right, right, right. Thing, things that where the minion is, the part of the battle cry is the minion. is or part, Sorry, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the battle, minions with battle cry that set off uh, the deaths of your opponent, that's, that sets it up. But uh, since it was in effect on the Knife Juggler, that wasn't the case. Uh, so Surrender really has had nothing to do there. Uh, didn't want to play the Nitro or sorry, the Mana Worm to just go to its death there um, from the Knife Juggler. And we see the power of this uh, Dark Peddler, able to give you so many options. Uh, you know, has the ability to get that Flame Imp or the Soul Fire, both of which are pretty good here. And uh, let's see if we can uh, get another knife on this Dark Peddler of his opponent. Doesn't really matter too much because the uh, Void Caller can, sorry, Void Walker can take it out. But uh, yeah. it'll still be nice nonetheless. Yeah, I just want to say pretty good positioning by Jay Shaw here. Obviously a pretty experienced zoo player. Uh, he positions in, in a way that um, so that Direwolf Alpha will uh, make his board the most effective. Yeah, Direwolf Alpha obviously already in the hand there to help him out uh, with those trades. Uh, the Defender of Argus is something else that can help, but you know you just position according to what you have in your hand already. Yeah. It just looks like uh, Jay Shaw, in a typical Zoo versus Tempo Mage fashion, he's just running away with this game. And that's mostly because Surrender, he only got like one of the unfair things from Tempo Mage, which is getting Mad Scientist into Mirror uh, Entity. And that wasn't even that good against this particular deck. Um, he needed to really get some more unfair things like Mana Worm on turn 1 or Sorcerer's Apprentice into uh, a lot of the 1 mana spells that are in his deck, like Arcane Blast and Arcane Missiles. Yeah, definitely that would be really helpful for him to kind of start clearing the board. Instead, it's Jay Shaw kind of running over him right now. Just so much damage coming out and nothing for Surrender to do whatsoever. Just has his you know standard minions, nothing to combo with him at all. Looks like he's going to go for a Hail Mary on Civil Portal. Gets no Zion Row, which doesn't really do anything, and that's going to be conceded from Surrender. Jay Shaw brings it back. It's now one game to two uh, from his perspective, and we're going to see if he can complete the reverse sweep like we saw from Eloise earlier. Uh, we currently have the Shaman and Paladin remaining for Jay Shaw and the Mage for Surrender. So what do you think about those, this matchup or these matchups coming up potentially? The Temple right. Mage versus the Aggressive Shaman or the Temple Mage versus the Secret Paladin? Right, so uh, as we mentioned before, it's kind of like 
Uh, players are going to go for the game wins and not just the match wins because game wins matter. So Jay Shaw will be queuing up with the best deck that he thinks matches up against this Taboo Mage. Obviously that was Zoo in the first game and I think it makes a lot of sense that he's going with Secret Paladin in the second game. Because in my opinion, face decks really don't match up against decks that try to go for board control. And Temple Mage, I want to say, is one of the decks that does go for board control, whereas Mech Shaman is more of a face deck. Um, Secret Paladin is also... Uh, not a, just a face deck, it's also a deck that really focuses on getting board control. So it's more of like a board control deck versus a board control deck. And I think uh, this will be a pretty even matchup in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Uh, these decks kind of, you know, working their best to gain control of that board through their various, you know, quote-unquote broken features. Uh, the Shaman, on the other hand, just crosses his fingers, tries to get something to stick, and hope that that minion can do a ton of damage to face. And oh. some, <laughs> that Manowar I, I, was pretty huge. <laughs> I already saw him mousing over the card that he drew, so I was like, oh, he drew Manowar on turn one. Pretty good. <laughs> and and now, like, I, I think Surrender might run away with this game. Um, the first key point was that he, he kept a Flame Waker in his opening hand, and that was because he had the coin. Flame Waker with the coin is, like, just so huge, so night and day. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about this matchup, like uh, Secret Paladin versus Tempo Mage, and like this kind of like a 50-50 from the start. People like kind of facetiously say it's Casino Mage, but it's even more Casino Magey just in the opening hands, like if you get the coin or not, because that makes such a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. Just having that coin for you know you get the extra mana and you get the two damage off can be huge. Gets uh, the what's that thing called again? North Sea Kraken. The North Sea Kraken, it, right? Or as I like to call it, the Super Fire Elemental. <laughs> yeah, 9-7 deals 4 damage uh, to something. And, I mean, that's pretty useful at 6 mana. So, I mean, obviously he's not going to be able to get something uh, in the near future, which is kind of what you want in this matchup that's dominated by early board control. But, right. uh, yeah, not going to have that for a while. Going to have to use his Flame Waker to good use in order to gain back this board. Surrender right now contemplating whether or not he wants to attack into this. Obviously, there's the Noble Sacrifice consideration. And uh, it does, and does go for it in the end. We see a Quartermaster come up for j -Shell, which is not going to be useful anytime soon, but does have the opportunity to play this Knife Juggler and uh, allow for the event to potentially go off. If you could get any card consistently with Unstable Portal, what, what would it be? That's pretty tough. I think it might be the... Um, what's the 4-4 Shaman card that makes everything bigger? Oh, uh, Mistcaller? Yeah, the Mistcaller. Because that turns into, what, a three mana minion? And you play that on turn three, and suddenly the rest of your minions are amazing. For six mana, you just kind of lose tempo, but for three mana, right. it's absolutely ridiculous. I, I like your way of thinking. I was going to say some, like, any six mana minion would be best because you can play it on turn three. I was going to go with something more generic, like Emperor Thorzin or Silvana High Main, but yeah, I like your answer quite a bit. All right, so Surrender with his hands on his head with a tough decision here. Uh, a lot of things to go to think about. Um, obviously, he doesn't know what that secret is. He just he just knows that it's not uh, noble sacrifice, and it's, it's not a competitive spirit, and it's not um, the repentance uh, either. So, right. So uh, he kind of narrows it down to avenge, which most likely it's going to be, and we know from our perspective it's going to be, or the um, the. Uh, Redemption. Yeah, and they, they make a big difference here because if this uh, this Neutron gets redempted, it's pretty annoying, even at just one health. Uh, this is obviously annoying as well. Uh, you can get rid of it with the uh, Frostbolt coin ping, but that's pretty expensive. Um, could also see him go for just playing the um, uh, Source Apprentice and Frostbolting that and leaving it for later, but again, those knives are pretty scary as well. Uh, looks like that's what he is indeed going to go for, and uh, just gonna brave it next turn. It seems. Yeah, you're. Uh, at least the the bright side of this is that you're not afraid of. Oh, consecrate is pretty good. I was gonna say you're not too afraid of the muster for battle because you would have seen it on turn three, but uh, this knife trigger does survive now, and it's gonna be a little awkward for surrender. Um, I think one of the reasons he didn't decide to Frostbolt and ping is that he really wants to save the coin because he has the option to combo the coin off with the Flame Waker or he can go for a turn 5 North Sea Kraken, which um, can kind of run away with the game. Yeah, that is pretty powerful, turn 5 coin North Sea Kraken. Um, Jaysha does go for the Consecrate here. Do you know if he runs two Consecrates or one? 
He runs two Consecrates in this deck. Okay, so that makes a bit more uh, likely that he was going to use it there in the first place. Um, Surrender has the opportunity to just kill this off with the uh, Flame Waker coin, but then you just have ping after that, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, could go for the uh, the Pile of Shatter just to kind of contest the board, but obviously not the best trade after you've already used a Frostbolt. Um, pretty tough. Looks like he's kind of agonizing over the decision. The standard surrender pose where he thinks about what he's trying to do here. But uh, yeah, pretty difficult all around um, whether, whether or not to yeah. go for the Flame Waker or the Shredder. Surrender has quite a reputation in Korea for being the Korean life coach. He just <laughs> pe people actually hate to play him in tournaments because he ropes so often. And he thinks so much, but you know it, it seems to be working out for him. So you can't really blame him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the top players, if not the top player in Korea. Obviously, I mean, I think Kranich is the only one who can kind of uh, compete with him there. But looks like he is going to go for the Flame Waker coin, uh, ping something, and it's going to clear off the Knife Traveler guaranteed. And he's just going to ping the face here. Uh, Jay Shaw can play this Shredder. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he can turn his Divine Favor into an Arcane Intellect if he plays the Night Juggler first, but that doesn't really compete with the uh, Flame Waker very well. So I imagine we're probably going to see a Shredder here. Yeah. A little unfortunate here that um, Divine Favor isn't really going to get much value. It's really a tech against control decks. Against aggro decks, it's usually you only draw for one at best, and that's if you make some really awkward plays as well. Yeah, definitely. And Surrender kind of uh, slightly playing around that. Now, I don't know if that was part of his decision, but uh, slightly plays around the Divine Favor with his play last turn. Um, looks like Surrender is kind of forced to use the Frostbolt here uh, instead of going for a stronger minion like the Azure Drake or the Paladin Shredder. And uh, we'll see where, ooh, it's a leopard, or not a leopard, uh, loot hoarder that uh, pops out. So, ends up being a good situation for Sunder doesn't have to waste any health on this uh, Flame Waker. And now he's going to be on his Kraken turn. Uh, yeah, but what can you really crack in here? Uh, like, uh, most likely, I guess it would be Knife Juggler Muster for Battle. Yeah, Knife Juggler Muster for Battle. Muster for Battle is a pretty good pickup here. Uh, it combos well with the the rest of his hand, honestly, other than the Divine Favor. Uh, wow, that's a... Is he going to get three? Wow! Oh, wow. oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> that's uh, pretty painful. And you know what? Not only that, but um, the Quartermaster will get insane value here. Uh, a card that is typically typically cut from Secret Paladin Index, but it seems to be situationally working for Jayshaw here. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be working really well. Surrender kind of laughing to himself, hoping it's not repentance. He's going to get the good news that it's not. Uh, it's probably the second worst. Well, not the second worst, I guess. I was going to say it's pretty difficult. It's pretty annoying for his 9 7 to potentially run into a noble sacrifice. But um, yeah, we're almost certainly going to be seeing this quartermaster here, probably with another uh, 1 1. I assume the repentance doesn't really do a whole lot. It just gets back a 1 1. So. Um, I think the only thing he's thinking about right now is whether to hit the face or to trade with this Kraken. I think face is the place here. You have the Noble Sacrifice, so um, yeah, you might as well. Also, these trades are just really awkward. If You you either have to run all three of these minions into the North Sea Kraken, or you have to hit, it with your or hit the guy with your face anyway. I think this actually is going to turn into kind of a race, because you see Dr. Boom, um, more likely than not, will be the play on turn 7. Um, and but at the same time, Jay Shaw he can't really deal with the Doctor Boom Ooh. that well. Wow, Ooh. he's actually going to do this. Um, the nine one will die to the Noble Sacrifice, but uh, I kind of like just going face there. Uh, right, I, I like it too because he put you put your opponent at seventeen, and you have what fourteen damage on the field, fifteen actually. So it's really, uh, you know, a dicey situation for them. Looks like Surrender's not going to attack with the 9-1. Realizes what that secret is. Top deck Tyrion is absolutely huge, though. Right. Well, now I guess he has to hit it with the face. And um, I, I think still, like, overall racing well, is pretty good here. He doesn't really have to. Um, what he can do is just... Run the two three threes into the face, and then use his two five and his face to clear off the two one ones, and then play Tyrion. And then the Doctor Boom or the Kraken has to swing, and uh, he's in a really good spot there, and he and he gets the six damage in. Right, you do miss two damage that way, and um, 
I guess it's really nice to kill off the boom bots here now, but oh, that's definitely a mistake, right? Sorry, I looked wanna... for a second. What did he do? He used his face? He... Yeah, he used his face to kill off the boom bot before he attacked with any of his 3 threes. It wow. worked out for him, but that yeah. could have gone pretty badly. Yeah, and pretty unfortunate for Surrender that the boom bot did hit Jayshaw's face there. Um, but, uh, yeah, going to be really interesting. I'm actually going to play the Tyrion first. Um, not worried about... Oh, he's actually going to kill the 9-1. Okay. So, wow, another boom bot to face. <laughs> Doesn't want to see that whatsoever. And, yeah, kind of a, a bit of a strange sequencing of plays there by Jayshaw. Gets rewarded for it uh, in the end because the boom bot's hit his face, but uh, really tough decision here, tough situation here for Surrender. Picks up the Antonius, which can be reasonable, he can immediately activate that and start using the fireballs, but um, I mean, given the way that Jayshaw has been, you know, tiptoeing around Surrender's board, that might just, you know, make Jayshaw start hitting the face from that point, if you think about it. All right, we still, ha we still have to remember that there's a Noble Sacrifice on the field, so this uh, Doctor Boom really isn't going to do anything. Yeah, nothing at all. It's, uh, I mean, I imagine you still kind of swing with it, because it's either... I mean, you're just going to be tormented by this, uh, this get-down from here on out if you don't, but uh, still going to be a really annoying situation. Mad Scientist probably isn't going to do much, honestly. There's yeah. so many minions that Jade Shaw could draw that just uh, proc the mirror entity anyway. And also, it just feels like the Mad Scientist, as strange as it sounds, is just too slow of a card. You do think that you're probably going to die in the next two turns, and uh, Mad Scientist isn't really going to contribute to that. Yeah, absolutely. Mad Scientist is one of the damage. best cards to get early, but uh, obviously not late. Uh, Repentance is not too bad, considering that it's kind of like it's kind of like a mirror entity, right? It's a... Uh, discourages your opponent from playing anything big and then now he gets to just play out his divine favor and potentially pick up something good gets a mysterious challenger obviously can't play that now but uh the redemption wait did he already play redemption? he does already play redemption okay so you can play the shredder for instance or maybe the noitron just to uh, protect his 3-3 three, three, and 2-4 but um yeah jaysha i meant i mean you can just go face here right yeah i imagine so um I guess you can trade somewhat with the the Mana Worm because it has the potential to get out of hand. I guess you, uh, and I guess you died a Fireball Frost. Well, no, you don't because the uh, the Tearing comes back. So it's really hard for you to die here with that Redemption on the board. Um, you'd have to... Surrender would have to kill something else and then kill the Tearing and then have the re requisite damage to uh, kill Jayshaw. Right. So, uh, he, he, could be, he could be worried about Fireball Fireball. Yeah, that's exactly what he's worried about. And so mm -hmm. he makes that trade. Fireball, fireball would be lethal with an Azure Drake on the field. Right. Um, so all that said, Jayshaw's playing uh, a bit safe, but he does still have a pretty massive lead. So uh, mm -hmm. kind of hard to blame him here. Uh, Surrender with a, in a really tough spot. He needs to kill something else before he kills uh, this Tyrion, unfortunately, which means likely going to see this arcane missiles if he's able to read that. Yeah. So the he's basically not playing around Flame Strike here. Flame Strike would just kind of wreck him, but from what we know of Surrender's deck list, there is no Flame Strike in the deck, so not really too many outs here. Mm, oh, kills the Tyrion by accident. Didn't want to see that happen. Now it's just going to come right back, and that's really horrible news for Surrender. Um, likely just just has to uh, ping and trade off his Dr. Boom, but uh, no matter what he does here, it's just really a horrible situation for Surrender. Right, trading after, so that would be, just, yeah, that's yeah, too much concedes. damage. So it doesn't want to give away the remaining cards in his hand, slash he is basically dead anyway. And uh, Jaychaw is going to bring it all the way back to two games to two. This is the second time in a row that we've had a game, or a series, go from 0-2 to that 2-2. Two -two. Last time, Eloise pulled off the reverse all kill. We will see if Jaychaw can do the same. However, this time he's playing with a Shaman, which... Uh, it's sometimes hard to pick up a win, as we saw yesterday. Yeah, um, it's very common for these matches to go to 3-2. Uh, I think for th uh, like a threefold reason. First of all, it is Conquest, which means that uh, oftentimes one deck will get stuck. Second of all, games do matter, so players are encouraged to bring their best decks to win every single game. So even if they're down 0-2, they're encouraged to bring their best deck against their opponent's remaining last deck. And uh, third of all, we were t talking to Firebat yesterday, and he mentioned that it's really smart in the Conquest format 
to target a specific deck. So in a lot of these matches, three decks are targeted against the last remaining deck of the opponent. And uh, that's why it's often very hard to get that last deck out. Yeah, all those absolutely contributing to the close scores here. Arcane Blast going to be pretty good for Surrender. Going to be able to play that for zero mana with the uh, Source's Apprentice. Uh, or, you know, combo with the uh, Flame Waker as well. So many things that he can do. Jayshaw with a pretty decent hand as well. We will see if that Flame Waker, or that uh, Flame Tongue Tunnel, excuse me, comes into play here. And uh, whether he can make use of that or if it uh, gets clunky in his hand. But it uh, looks like he's going to start off with the good old-fashioned Mech Warper into Clockwork Gnome. That's a good of a start as any. Uh, not only that, but Flame Tongue Totem, a card that not a lot of people tend to bring in these decks, is uh, an available start or an available card for him to play on the very next turn. And that's going to just uh, do really well against the Tempo Mage, uh, generally. Yeah, for Surrender's sake, I think, I imagine he's just going to go for the Mad Scientist here. Everything else is a bit weak. Uh, I guess he could go for the Sorcerer's Apprentice plus the. Um, Arcane Blast or the Mana Worm and Arcane Blast onto the Clockwork Gnome to kind of uh, contest the board a bit better. Uh, but the Mad Scientist is a 2-2 two -two and it spawns, you know, at worst a 1-2 uh, the following turn. And then from there he can maybe make some fireworks happen with uh, that Arcane Blast plus uh, the other cards in his hand. So yeah, it does go for the Mad Scientist in the end. Yeah, so from the previous, in one of the previous games Surrender was playing Mech Mage and he was playing against Zoo. Um, and based on that, he based on his hand that he had in that game, he decided to go for face. Do you think it's more likely on this particular game that the, this mech shaman will go for face, or what? Or he'll try to go for board control instead? Um, it seems like a really aggressive deck, so I imagine he's going to go for a face more often. Uh, the Seeker Paladin, he did a lot of trading, but you know, to be fair, that deck does rely on tempo a lot and kind of denying the options from your opponent. So uh, I think we'll see Jaychaw go up face a bit more. The question here is whether or not he's going to... Uh, oh, he's actually going to trade that way. He wants to uh, keep his uh, Mech Warper alive, and this way he's going to be able to clear off this Flame Tongue Tone right away. Yeah, pretty nice play. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, I, I don't know how you want to look at it. Uh, this is really hard for Surrender to get rid of. Normally, a, a Flame Tongue Totem isn't very threatening uh, because you can just kill it off with a weapon or a three uh, damage spell, but unfortunately, that's not going to be the case here. Yeah, Surrender offering up these guys for sacrifice right now. Not going to play the Arcane Blast. Going to save that for next turn with his uh, Flame Waker. And. Um... Yeah, just, this is basically just sacrificial. He wants to get something on the board so he doesn't take, you know, continuous damage to face. Uh, in his mind, hopefully one of these survives, and we can see that that is going to be the case. One of these minions is going to survive to allow him to kind of allow, uh, make some fireworks happen next turn. Yeah, and just judging from this hand, um, this is actually going to be really good for Surrender because just J-Shot doesn't have a lot of minions to play or... Uh, any spells to play. If a Rock Biter were in Jay Shaw's hand or a Lightning Bolt, it would be pretty disastrous for Surrender, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. But, Sorry, yeah, no. I would like the, with the obvious trades here. Then the Sorcerer's Apprentice survives, um, and then Surrender can go for a Flame Walker plus the Arcane Blast on the next turn. Yeah, definitely. And oh, that is actually pretty huge. That. Uh... That healing totem, uh, just because now not, we... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, not as good as Taunt, I think. Um, well, the, the big thing is that um, Surrender wants to get rid of this Mech Warper because there's potential for uh, a Fell Reaver that we see in the hand of Jaysha. And uh, Surrender's a really smart player, so I imagine that's something that's in his mind, on his mind, uh, excuse me, uh, that Flame Waker, sorry, the Fell Reaver could be coming out here. And so, yeah, we will see what he decides to go for. I think he's going to trade into the... Uh, yeah, he's going to trade into the Flamethrowing Totem first, and then probably go with the um, Arcane Blast. He might actually kill the Totem? No, okay, he's going to go for the Guaranteed Kill, and then that's going to allow room for this Fell Reaver to come up, which is uh, going to be pretty unfortunate for Surrender. Yeah, unfortunately, Tempo Mage is not one of those decks that uh, runs BGH. It's uh, a Tempo deck, which means uh, it relies on the um, the Tempo to, to kind of deal with the flame, uh, the the fell reaver. It relies on having a, a really dominant board uh, going to the turn of fell reaver, or it relies on the fireball, which oftentimes is enough. But unfortunately, no fireball here for surrender, and he's kind of like used up all his resources 
just trying to get board control, struggling for board control early on. Um, and he's done so quite inefficiently as well. We saw this first Mana Worm from Surrender just getting killed off by a lowly Mech Warper. Yeah, for free, essentially, because of that uh, healing totem. So we do see the uh, Arcane Missiles, and I believe it's going to be used here. So I'm wondering whether or not he should uh, kill this uh, this totem first, but uh, I think you don't kill it. Um, just to have more things to hit. But, uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, it's just gonna do that uh, to... I mean, the, the milling of the opponent doesn't really matter too much. But, uh, yeah, I imagine it's gonna be a ping onto... Oh, actually, he's able to kill it. That's actually pretty huge. Yeah, uh, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, unfortunately, it just seems like Jay Shaw has card advantage now. Yeah, somehow with the with this certain uh, with his uh, aggressive shaman. Yeah, and not only that, but he has ancestral knowledge as well. So that card advantage will compound even more. Wow! So oh, yeah, really so good unlucky. turn for Lothab. Uh, Jay Shaw with the perfect turn to play Lothab. They're locking out that arcane uh, intellect. And, uh, yeah, Surrender just has to ping and pass. And that's really painful because, I mean, he might have wanted to... He might actually want to play the Antonidas just vanilla on the board next turn. Um, and that's not really going to be too much of an option. Or, I mean, it will be less good of an option without other cards to back it up. Jaysha with um, the ability, obviously, to play, you know, both minions in hand right now. Uh, could also go for a Lava Burst, but I imagine he's just probably going to kill uh, the Flame Waker with his Lotha. It's just, just a really good trade right now. And... Yeah, not, not only that, but he plays a lot of minions that have comparable healths, health amounts. So now, Surrender, if he had something like an Arcane Blast, he would have to decide, do I, is this Lotha more threatening, or is the, um, the Whirling Zapomatic more threatening here? I think the, maybe the Whirling's automatic more threatening just because of the uh, six damage every turn and maybe even more of that, uh, strangely enough. But uh, yeah, gonna go for the Arcane Intellect. And that's partially because of the Flame Cannon that he picked up. He can use this to maybe clear something up. Grom is a pretty good pickup. Can use it pretty defensively uh, for five mana, even better, too. So uh, there's hope for Surrender yet. Gets the Flame Cannon on the worst minion because there's no mechs in hand to make cheaper anyway. I would be pretty surprised if Jaysha doesn't just Doomhammer here. That's a lot of damage he'd be uh, throwing away if he just totemed. Mm. Yeah, so it looks like he's finally going to go for that, that Doomhammer, the Golden Doomhammer nonetheless. Yeah, funnily enough, the uh, the Whirling Blades is actually pretty good as well here. If he didn't have, if he had like an additional mana, it would be two extra damage. And if he didn't have this Doomhammer, that would have been a pretty good choice as well. Oh, wow, really good draw for... Uh, for a surrender here, and it just might be that he could potentially take the, back this game. Yeah, there's so much damage for Jay Shaw, though. It's just, I mean, and this Annoyatron is actually really good because it's going to be really annoying to get past it. Uh, we have uh, at a minimum eight damage from the hand of Jay Shaw, at a maximum, it's 11. And uh, going for, I mean, he has 12 damage left on this Doom Hammer as well, so. Uh, surrender on a pretty quick clock, and he's going to have to kill his opponent before then. don't think there's many taunts in Surrender's deck, so looking really poor for him. Right, in Tempo Mage, there's typically no taunts in the deck, so uh, I wouldn't blame him if he, if he just Earthshocked this Grom here. Right. Although, you know, there are, all, are always unstable portal shenanigans, and that 10 attack Grom actually isn't doing much with the uh, Neurotron. Yeah, definitely. Um, so he can, yeah, maybe he can use the Urshock for some unknown minion later. And uh, yeah. with the Whirling either, Blades... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it would either have to be something off the Pilot of Shredder or something off Unstable Portal. Yeah. So with the Whirling Blades and uh, the Lava Burst and the Crackle, I think Jay Shaw just wins this next turn. Um, on... I think so as well. I think just... Yeah, just from those cards, even if the board is fully clear, there's really not uh, too much of an option. The only way for Surrender to actually uh, save himself would be some crazy unstable portal, or if you got a Frostbolt to the face, for example. Yeah, so this is going to be guaranteed lethal here, not even with the Whirling Blades. Uh, the yeah, Minimum 8 damage. Going to go for the totem anyway. 
Oh, um, you, you have to go for the uh, spell power crackle for BM. <laughs> Even just rolls the three. And Jaysha is going to take it, going to do the reversed all kill. And that's the second time we've seen that today, surprisingly enough. Uh, he is going to take that series three games to two. Eloise so far uh, and Jaysha are our players with wins, surrender, and our and uh, Fualver with losses. Uh, so those are our standings, you know, so to speak. With uh, Jaysha and Eloise tied for first, Fualver and surrender tied for last. The top two players of this group do move on to the single elimination bracket finals. And uh, we have four matches left today. Uh, continuing with Eloise versus Surrender in the next match with our two invites. What do you think about that, Monk? Yeah, I just uh, kind of want to go over that last series. I think even though Surrender lost, he probably made one of the most impressive plays uh, of the series, which was in the Mech Shaman versus Zoo game. He looked at his hand and he decided, okay, this is a hand I can use to just play a Whirling Zapomatic on turn one and get a ton of damage in. And just based off of that, you can see how close that game was at the end because it's such an unfavorable matchup for Mech Shaman. But based off the 12 damage that he got early on, he was able to barely squeak out the game. Yeah, really well played by him. Able to get a win out of a deck that's not doing too well in this tournament so far. Unfortunately, his Tempo Mage uh, did not work out for him. So that's going to be it for this match. Uh, make sure you guys stick around. We're going to be seeing Eloise versus Surrender after the break. <laughs> 